today guys I'm working on a 500 gigabyte SanDisk uh, external uh, SSD uh, they come in now very frequently uh, not in this kind of condition but uh, with other problems and uh, I gotta tell you that success rate on them is really really good so if you have a SSD that looks like this uh, it can come in uh, either uh, SanDisk form like that or it can come in a WD um, passport SSD form like this essentially it's the same unit let's uh, dive in and find out what's going on with this thing this came from uh, a repair shop uh, that is starting out and I don't know exactly what went down here and what we'll need to do but uh, it's the unit is completely taken apart I I don't even know why it was taken apart because I, I can't test anything specifically right now I can just see a bunch of components being off the board um, this is a fairly thick board and having experience with it I would prefer to work on the uh, um, hot plate and also for memory it's better to not heat it too much if you don't have to uh, it's not that it's going to be the end of the world, but obviously the less you do, the better it's going to be for the device. So um, what are we going to do? Let's uh, have a look. And the reason why I, I've received this unit quite a while ago, but the reason I didn't proceed yet is just I didn't have a correct pitch stencil for it. And uh, I bought a bunch of stencils um, on the last purchase. And uh, this one here, SSD3, uh, came in very, very uh, closely matching would have been perfect but there's one fine thing that doesn't um, work so if I switch over to a microscope for you this is our component we need to do reball on because when previous place took it off um, well obviously if you take it off and the pitch is this fine preferably you would want to just clean everything up in terms of old solder and redo everything from scratch this unit has uh, these Shasta um, stencils. This is the widest one we have. If we use this one, it doesn't fall into the uh, spec of the uh, grid. If we use this one, it falls in the spec, but uh, it doesn't fit all of them, you see. We have maxed out the a row on the top but we got one down got two down two extra that we need to accommodate if we use this one it falls in the grid left to right is good top is good but how many down do we have one two we still have two and the last one we got here line everything up the top is clean side to side we're good we have one extra space if only this adapter was one extra space more we could have used it perfectly but because we don't have it we're just gonna stick to this reball it and then what I'll do is I'll switch it over to this generic one it still falls into the same grid I'm just gonna do the bottom row separately. The surface, and the surface I will clean for sure. So the surf, the, this SSD will go on the hot plate, but uh, let's do a reball on it first. Okay, so that's lightened up there.
Okay. And you see we got everything uh, done except for the bottom row. Like this. So now um, we can just controller is ready. I'm gonna get the hot plate going. It's right here. I'm gonna set it up to uh, 200 and um, this will go right in there. The work is gonna be done s while it's on the hot plate with both the uh, uh, NAND and the controller because uh, both of them had been removed. I want to put this controller back on and I want to get a uh, controller uh, to, to a point where it's recognized. If it's recognized uh, then we can work with the NAND. These drives they run uh, very very hot. Heat um, and cooling can start oxidizing these uh, pads especially if it's like a humid air. Pads can get oxidized just because of that. Let's um, get the NAND uh, redone while uh, we're waiting for the heat to uh, approach because that preheater it's pretty old so it takes a while for it to heat up I don't know if the newer ones do it quicker but this one really you can go for a lunch break until it gets to the temperature you want so we're gonna wait um, until it gets there let me grab a braid and I'm gonna carefully take this and then get it leveled. So if there's uh, any uh, oxidization there's any corrosion that, that will take care of it. Now we can just go with the braid and clean the pads. So to reboil it, I'm going to use BGA 316 um, stencil. It has not exactly the same uh, roster, but it's uh, it uses all of the pads that this chip is using.
like I said, it's uh, not exact um, unit, so we're gonna have a couple of spare bowls to remove. Okay, so pads for the NAND are good. The controller is good. Alright, so let's connect the unit to PC3000, port 0, and when we go to the utility, we want to see uh, this light show up, power up, the light comes on, enter universal utility, we should get controller recognized, and uh, it does, we see SanDisk, Polaris, and VME ROM mode turned on. So. What is ROM mode, guys? The ROM mode is when the controller works with itself only, when the NAND is removed, aka safe mode. Prepare the unit for the NAND placement. Since we have uh, used our own leaded solder that uh, melts much, much faster, we can just reboil it using the uh, jig without the bottom preheater. I think it's going to be good enough. Some of this flux is stale, but it's not going to affect how the bonding is going to go anyways. I'm just going to add a bit more of fresh one. The dot right here indicates the orientation for the chip that has to be also lined up in that same position. Yeah, I'd say it's a really good landing.
power up physical is recognized to leave and go back in we have a Western Digital SN 550E serial number 500 gig capacity we go to sector edit we can read the data virtual disk as target and there we go a beautiful green sequential blocks let's stop this and go to the structure dealing with the structure here would be probably best thing because if the unit is not full we don't need to image blank space it's uh, extreme SSD is what they call it SanDisk extreme SSD even though it does come up as a Western Digital unit Western Digital acquired at SanDisk so it's not surprising that we see those names uh, use sector map is what I'm interested in because this is XFAT I'm not just gonna jump into the file system and start exploring it because that file system extends a, a lot a lot a lot into the drive uh, so grabbing the whole use space and cloning it out would be probably the fastest way to uh, produce a full recovery out of this thing the unit is only 34 gigabytes used guys so this is beautiful because uh, selecting everything and scanning is gonna give us uh, a replica of this unit even though the speed through um, uh, vendor utility like this and imaging it into a virtual disk also doesn't help the speed but we're not rushing anywhere if we look at the uh, progress here we're reading at about three four megabytes which is uh, totally normal uh, two hours later we'll have a full copy of the data um, unless the device stops working which I don't think it will I have never seen it and I worked on so many devices identical to this one uh, that uh, it's becoming my number one favorite device to work with so if you guys have a SanDisk Extreme SSD or if you have a WD Passport SSD that stopped working on you you can send it here um, I have not came across a single one yet that I haven't recovered this one was warming up the bench for the longest time simply because I don't have I didn't have the uh, uh, stencil to put chips that were already removed before I got the unit so uh, now that I do I can even perform these types of things but the issue was uh, resolved I don't know maybe if it was a corrosion maybe it was something else but as you can see the device is back up and working and uh, the data is getting extracted so thank you very much for watching this episode. If you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. And uh, if you need this uh, type of work done, check the link in the description box. It will take you to our website where you can request our services. Thank you very much for watching again. I'll see you all in the next episode.